today we're at Pan Asia. This is in the Susangu of Daegu, South Korea. Um, so what we're doing here is I have Colonel Towler with me. So I wanted to take you to this spot um, for our first episode of Food for Thought. Uh, this is kind of showing the cultural side of South Korea, but also you get a taste of the actual culinary side. So what we're doing here is we're going to place our order and then start with a basic conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Eat on. Nice. Yeah. So I will have the stir fried chicken. And then I will have the shrimp beef grilled noodle. And for drink, can I have a smoothie? Uh, the blueberry, please. Yeah, and I'll, I'll try the coconut coffee smoothie. Okay. Thank you. Samida. Samida. All right, sir. Thank you for joining us. Um, so what I want to do is give the audience, the viewers, a chance to get a better understanding of you. So if you could tell us a little about who you are and your upbringing. Dwight Tyler Jr. Uh, upbringing, raised, born in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, raised in what, what some folks would say the 757 Hampton Roads area of Virginia. Um, born to, my dad was a Marine uh, in Vietnam. My mom was an educator. Uh, and I will tell you, uh, coming up, I never thought I would be serving in the United States military. Really? Why is that, sir? Um, I did not do ROTC or anything in, in, in high school. And it wasn't until my mom actually went to an event and saw ROTC cadets where she started, she did inquire. And uh, I got, she put me on to a, a four-year Army ROTC scholarship at Norfolk State University. Nice. Kind of let everybody know what you do at 19th ESC. If you could explain what does the G3 do and what are your ambitions in the G3 shop? Yeah, I think, you know, just to kind of set the stage for that question, um, it was so important for me to, to be the G3, an operations officer at this level, especially with me uh, being selected uh, soon to be a brigade commander. Uh, this is important. I diversify myself at this level uh, just to better myself. So one thing I would say as far as operation officer, I look at it, the job is so important because I take, I take the, the commander general's vision okay. and I take his, what, what he wants to do and I, I'm like the, the maestro. Mm. I'm the one that's directing everything for the command and my shop and we're working hard to ensure that we meet his intent and his end state. Okay. Uh, so we're like the, the nucleus uh, of the command per se. Okay. So um, it's important because we're the balance as well, mm. you know, ensuring that it's not all work, but it's some play. Right. It's, it's ensuring that I can tell the commander uh, when, hey, we need to, here, here's white space that we need to keep as white space. Right. Um, and my relationships as well with not only the other fellow commanders, other MSC commanders, but okay. the staff, you know, the ESC staff and how I work hand in hand with them to ensure mm -hmm. that, hey, when they have things that need to get done, we put it, we task it accordingly and we, we help them um, to achieve their, their goals as well. Nice. I love that. Um, I want to harp on that for a second. You've been selected for command. Which command is this? So, uh, selected for 2nd Sustained Brigade, actually, in 2ID. So you're ID. staying in Korea? Roger that, roger okay, that. Okay, okay. So, when you get to that command slate, um, what do you think is going to be some of the things you lead by? So, if you can talk on your passions that motivate you and drive you, what kind of uh, commander do you see yourself as? What do you see as your command philosophy, if you will? Mm -hmm. So, for me, I will tell you it's not about me. Okay. One. I'm a, I'm a very humble individual, and I, and I tell everyone, I do this, I do this for the soldiers. Mm. I do this for my peers. I do this for, we're a team. Yeah, I think I have a, my philosophy is more of a team effort. I want everybody to win. I want everybody to pursue their goals. Pursue their goals. I will tell you, for, for soldiers, um, what I do is, I, my philosophy and what it, the, the, I try to inspire soldiers, not only be better soldiers, but be just better members of society. That's good. You know, that's my drive, that's my like motivation. That. Um, I'm very compassionate, I'm very passionate. I have a lot of empathy about for what mm -hmm. I do. Um, and I leave from the front at all times. Go ahead, Whether, sir. It's, whether it's physically, uh -huh. you know, mentally, spiritually, I try to set the example for others to, to follow uh, and emulate. You said uh, leading from the front. Uh, what did you score on ACFT? Oh, so uh, somewhere around a, a 594 is what I scored on the ACFT. So, um, I would tell you, Javon, though, is, you know, I talked to you recently, uh, Command Sergeant Major Peters, about this, is it's, it's a lifestyle. Okay. You know, this is a lifestyle. This is something, you know, health, health goes beyond just wearing a uniform. 
Right. You know, health is going to be what's going to keep us to 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 for longevity. Mm. You know, when I when I have grandkids, when I when I do put the commodity uniform, when I have grandchildren. I want to be able to throw the football. I want to be able to play basketball. I want to be able to do things with them mm -hmm. physically, and it starts here every day. Um, it's consistency. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think our food is ready. Oh, this is this is awesome. From Samida. Samida. All right, so let's give it a taste, sir. I want you to enjoy your food. Yeah, just... just All right, so when it comes mm -hmm. to joining the Army, yep. uh, we just changed our slogan, if you will, recently, mm -hmm. to be all you can be. So when you hear be mm -hmm. all you can be, sir, what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. To me, you know, be all you can be is be better than, where, than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, try to be the best individual you can. Try to be the best individual you can. You know, soldiers and people in general are the building blocks of any organization. It starts with the people. That's true. Start with the soldier. You're only strong as your weakest link. That's true. And, and I will tell you, when I hear be all you can be, um, it's a place that, um, especially the Army, that one can come into right. and, and just the sky's the limit of what you can do in this organization and, and how far you can go. Um, it's a lot of people that are invested in your success. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, like I said, we're rolling as a team. It's one team, one fight. So uh, that's what I get from Be All You Can Be. And, and I tell every soldier, you know, every day, you're only competing with yourself. You're literally only competing with yourself, no one else. Mm. You're competing with yourself to be better than what you were the day, the day prior. Um, so every day when you get up and you look in the mirror, you know, your goal is to go out and, and be the best person you can be. Right. Be the best teammate you can be. So when you come home at night, you can sleep well at night. Mm -hmm. And I gave it my all. I left it all on the field. I did everything I was supposed to do. Right. And I'm growing and I'm maturing. I, I think that's what, and that's that's the happiness I get from it, is mm -hmm. seeing soldiers um, with that pride, with that joy, that, that come to work and they leave work happy. You know, they leave work happy. They're glad to be there. Yeah. They're glad to be developing. They're glad to be growing. They're glad mm -hmm. to be a member of a team. You know, and I know whether they stay in the military or not, when they get out, they can be a good member of society. Right. You know, um, this too shall pass, you know. <laughs> and and I, I tell you, is as long as I can get that message across while I'm in, mm -hmm. I'm making a difference. There you yeah. go. I like that. I heard of this thing called the Regional Sustainment uh, Framework. Um, <laughs> so we did an article on it. Um, but for our viewers, can you tell us how do you influence the regional sustainment framework from 19th ASC's perspective? I can, well, uh, Javon, I can tell you how I see it. How do you, you see know, it, sir? From, um, you know, even going as far up as the national security strategy and understanding mm. um, what lies ahead of us as far as pacing threats and persistent threats within this region, I can tell you it's essential right now that we as the most, you know, forward posture sustainment command, you know, that we not only are, are focused on the peninsula, but we, we have a, a presence within the region. I will tell you um, how we posture ourselves here mm -hmm. now is, is more important than ever. Our capabilities within, you know, the combat power generation centers and, and thing, the ability to fix forward is more important than ever now. Right. Um, when things, uh, when equipment breaks down in this region, where it should it should come to uh, it should come to us to get repaired versus going back to Conus, going back to California. You talk about saving time. You talk about saving money. You talk about having that presence to be able to fight tonight and sustain the fight tonight mm. is extremely important. So when I think about a regional framework, is where we're headed and where we need to be headed and. Um, I'm glad to be here. This is where, this is really the tip of the spear, um, in my opinion, uh, for the Army right now is being out here in the Pacific. That makes sense. That's, I love that response, sir. And when you say combat power, combat power generation center, you're referring to MSCK's capabilities. Roger. That's right. All right, sir. How about it? Cheers. Cheers. I love it. It's not too sweet. Just right really about. And I'm a, I'm a coffee guy. Like, uh, uh, 
majority of military folks <laughs> is drink tons of coffee and yeah, that, really? that is very tasty. Okay, so I read an article mm -hmm. uh, last week on predictive sustainment and data-driven logistics. Mm -hmm. um, so I know we're, we're moving forward to that army of 2030. Um, people yes. are saying if you're not using AI or if you're not into mm -hmm. your data-driven analytics and understanding them because without context it's just information mm -hmm. right um, but you need that That's context right. you know you want to turn that data into information and then vice versa to have that as a knowledge base so when it comes to data driven logistics uh, where do you see us in the future and how are we currently using it oh right now i think when you talk about data data that that when put together uh, creates information that, that in turn creates a knowledge for commanders to make decisions in a timely manner and, the, and the, the speed of the, the flash of bang from data to making a decision from that and having the, like I say, complete context right. is it so important nowadays. It's so important, it's critical. It's critical nowadays. Um, being able to proactively uh, versus reactively mm -hmm. affect you know, sustainment and logistics to sustain tempo. And I say sustain tempo. Um, so. You, you're able to uh, continue to fight is 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 going to be an important, especially in the MDO, this multi-domain right. environment, right? Mm -hmm. I will tell you that when we get to a point when I see this in the future, it's going to be more like what we're seeing now in the, in, you know, uh, in today's society where our military vehicles, uh, we're going to know when to change parts out prior right. prior to the system going deadline. That's gonna, you know, when, when parts uh, reach their life, their predictive mm -hmm. maintenance, when they reach their life, their life cycle, uh, something will tell us, and hey, you need to change this part out because based on history, based on right. historical, yeah. uh, this is when this part fails. So knowing that prior to that system becoming deadline right. in, in a field, in an environment, a combat environment is important. Yeah. So having that, um, and we have, it's so many different data entry points right now. There There's so many times. different data entry points, but what do you do with that data and how do you get it quickly uh, where, it's, where you can get the added context to make a decision from right. it? And it's that's everywhere. Gonna, that's what's going to separate the winners from the losers that's and when it, when it matters. And um, yeah, for us, I think you'll see it grow, it evolve mm -hmm. uh, with artificial intelligence. You're going to see it evolve over the next few years. I like that. Mm -hmm. Even with when it comes to AI, um, people are afraid that AI will replace uh, certain jobs, but it's more so the person who knows how to adequately use AI to enhance productivity, mm -hmm. that's the person that's going to replace the job. They're going to replace the current one in that position. So I, I think uh, it's already out there. It's already being used. Companies are using even Amazon. They can tell me when I need to order more diapers if mm -hmm. I'm on a consistent basis. Um, they'll tell you when your refrigerator, you know, lights go out type deal. So those predictive analytics are out there. I think when we incorporate it to sustainment, uh, specifically within sustainment warfighting function, um, I think then we're advancing our army to that of the 2030, that of predictive sustainment, data-driven sustainment. That's right. Um, you, you hit the nail on the head, sir, when you talked about exact key points when a part needs to be ordered based on historical data. I'm a former logistician and I remember going to the SSA myself, mm -hmm. you know, picking up parts and PGRing them in the system with G Army. Um, and these commanders are on the ground and they know, hey, they can adjust on the fly this data driven analytics because yes, it's saying it needs to be replaced. However, I'm in the middle of the fight. I can't change this tire right now. Um, however, we can mm -hmm. make uh, the commander, excuse me, can make on the ground decisions and then inform higher. And I think we'll continue to refine and develop uh, that part of sustainment, if you will. And, and Javon, I tell you, your near peer, your peer to peer threats are doing that. Mm. You got to stay in this environment where we are right now in 2023. You got to stay ahead of them. We do. You got to stay ahead of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the past two decades, um, they've they've sat back and they've, they've made strides in AI, they made strides in the space domain, they made strides in the cyber domain. That's true. It's time for us, you know, I think we're doing a great job of, of closing the gap in, in certain areas. Um, so it's important. And, and for us as sustainers, mm -hmm. uh, we owe it, we owe it to our combat arms brothers uh, to, to, you know, provide a right, the, the, the right sustainment, the right capabilities at a point of need. That's true. Yeah.
You have a, a depth of knowledge, sir. And I love that you've been selected for this position to be a commander because I see you now as laying the groundwork for even in the future when you're long gone, um, just your the mindset that you have to continue to develop the soldiers, the people, uh, looking forward to how you're gonna look into sustainment is amazing. Um, that brings me to my next question. What advice do you have for someone who's looking to take your position when you leave to be a commander oh. as an OIC of a G3 section? I would say, I'm gonna say in general, um, not just a G3 section, but any job you go into, study a job before you go into it. You're right, you know where you're getting yourself into. Yeah, you see so many, especially um, young officers that show up to work um, uh, ill-prepared. Mm. And I would tell you, study the job, read the field manuals, read the ARs, and then go on with a plan. Go on with a plan. Um, that's really the that's the foundation is to have a plan. To go with a plan, a vision of how you want how you, how do you see things working out. The next thing you want to do when you step into especially a job like a G three is you're looking okay. for efficient processes. Mm. You know, ensure your processes are, are right for the command. What works, what doesn't work. Okay. You know, analyze that. Um, when I first got here, one thing that we quickly put into place was the, the G3 S3 sync uh, on Thursdays. And that's where I bring all the staff, all the, all the staff sections come into that meeting, all the, all the S3s come into that meeting. And we go over all the orders that are out there, even forthcoming orders. We go over all the taskers. We go over, it's, it's bottom up and it's top driven downward dialogue to flatten okay. comms. It is, it's probably one of the most important venues of the week because everyone leaves there knowing, okay, I know exactly what's happened. Got now, marching now, orders. Yes, I know where the priorities are. And I, guess what? I know it's about to come out in the order on Friday. Mm. So, so that's one. The second thing we did was um, when I first got here, we, we were seeing orders being peppered throughout the week. Okay. Just being you know, sent out, order, mm. order, order, order. So what we did was, hey, let's do every Friday Majority of our orders come from high year on, on Friday afternoon. So what we do, we'll, we'll get that, we piece it together, we'll analyze it Monday, Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, we'll go, we'll go into the DMC sync, we'll, we'll do things with the staff. Then we'll go into our G3 S3 sync, we'll slap the table, and we'll produce our own sustainer task award on Fridays. It's all encompassing of all the orders. Got it. So you're not chasing orders down. All right, it's one document. One, it's one document that comes out every week. Now, if there are emergency, emerging requirements from higher, right. we capture in what we call the flash award. Okay. But it's, it's systems and processes mm. uh, where if I'm here or not, the place continues to row. It's going to continue it's to move gonna on. It's going to continue to move on. That's an amazing concept, sir. I have seen that change, mm -hmm. and I will say it's a welcome change um, because people want predictability. Mm -hmm. You know, even the staff sections and the G3s, the OICs, they want to know what do they need to do or what information they need to put out. So I will say that's a welcome change. That's right. Um, and yeah. it's value added. And Jamal, I'll tell you, with the staff sections, it was amazing to them is now I got a venue, if I have something that needs to be done that hasn't come out in, let's say, a, a, a higher headquarters order, but something I need to get done for my shop, I can take that into the G3 S3 sync and then work with the G3 to get it published in an order. There we go. You know, it gives them a venue to get after their, right. their goals. You're helping them help I'm themselves. helping them out. I'm helping them go. out. So, again, it's, 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 it's one team. It's one team. And, and so you, you want to lead an organization better than better than was when, you know, better than what it was when you got here. Exactly. And I think that's what the end state is. And also leave it with um, some some processes that, that live on beyond your tenure. And I think that's that's probably the most important and things that can help the, the, in our case, the command general out. Right. Yeah. That tells me what all of our goals are is to help the unit. I'll talk about Korea for a minute. I would tell every young soldier, young officer, okay. to go to many, as many different AORs as possible, as many different units as possible, don't homestead, um, to get out and see, you know, see the world, experience the world, and experience different assignments. And I, I would tell you for Korea, this is where you need to you need to do at least at least one tour in Korea, and I would tell young soldiers don't be scared of it. All right. So it's a lot of good training going on, a lot of opportunities go here in Korea, a lot of good training um, at the operational and the tactical level. Uh, we it's a learning environment. It truly is in Korea, um, 
And you might not see it now. For a lot of young soldiers out there now that, that are across the peninsula, they might not see it now, but they will remember it. Uh, it will show its face later on in later assignment that, hey, I remember doing this while I was stationed in Daegu. I remember doing this when I was stationed in Humphreys. So right. I remember, remember being in this exercise. I remember supporting this warfighter. I mean, I remember going to the field and doing, hey, you know, this. That's going to be uh, it's important for self-development. It's important for growth. Uh, it's also important to the future leaders of the organization to say, I've, I've been there, done that. I've seen that before. I understand right. that environment. So I would tell, I would tell a lot of soldiers, just keep moving, just keep moving around, yeah. diversifying your portfolio, your experiences. Uh, it just makes you a better NCO, makes you a better officer. It does. It gives you more of a, a perspective of the entire army. You know, being under Force Com, being under Eighth Army USFK, uh, wherever you may be. And Korea is not the place that you may think it once was in the past. You know, it's beautiful. I mean, look where we are now. It's, all types of, um, it's melting pots of culture, uh, respect is deeply ingrained into society here. Um, they actually love us here, we work hand in hand with our, our ROC, our Republic of Korea Army partners. Um, so this is a chance to get that experience where you're blending cultures, um, you're enjoying your lifestyle, you're enjoying work, you're able to work one up. Yes. Uh, if you'd like to, there's KD positions here, um, so basically the pitch is come to Korea you'll love it right this is the place where you can enjoy yourself and explore all of the many things that South Korea has to offer the only thing I would say in addition right now because it's, it's so important to have a purpose driven life okay and to, to really know who you are Spend time to get the, to know who you are, know what your purpose is in life. Mm. So there you have it. I have my guest, Colonel Tyler, the G3 OIC for 19th Expeditionary Sustainment Command. We had an incredible meal, um, had a food for thought conversation. So with that said, thank you for tuning in. Wish you nothing but the best. Out.